Have you ever created your own menu and you had menu items that you needed to pass in to your menu control? Well, if I click on menu items here, I have a collection and this was all created in the app on start. Now we could go into app formulas and define all of the fields. We could define the schema that we want to define for our menu item. Now, here in the last few days, they've released this new feature of user defined types. So now you'll start to see other things. I don't quite understand why they have the sample arrays or collections here. They're there if you want to use them. But for a long time, we've only had number, text, date, quid, all these different types. Now, something I have noticed is now that the feature's been out for two or three days, I now notice when I pull in data sources on the data tab, they appear here. Okay, so that's nice. So I could have a user defined function that returns a, a table or a record type. Now I'm going to hit control Z and get that text back. So here on this notice, these are the types that we've had. Let's talk more about the user defined types. This is the syntax for creating a type. You give it a name and then you've got a colon with an equal sign with the type function. And between cur two curly braces, you can name off everything that you want to have in there. Okay, so we've got uh, a person type. Also, look, address. We have address line one, address line two, city, state, zip. So I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to turn on the new analysis engine, which is required for user-defined functions and types. And it's warning me that we'll have to do a full page refresh, which is no problem. Now I'm going to type in user, click on experimental, and turn on user-defined functions and user-defined types. I'll click close. I'll click save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the refresh button in the browser. We're all refreshed now. now. The text function, thankfully, is a declarative function, and it allows us to format values into a specific format of a string. So I'm going to take this date to format, and this is almost like a variable at this point. Once you define an argument, here we go, date to format. What's the format that we want? Let's make it really different. We'll have the day, two-digit day. We'll put a dash in there. And if I want the month abbreviation, I put three Ms. And then for year, I want the full four-digit year. And that's it. Now, the month, for example, November, would probably return capital N, lowercase o-v. Well, let's say we want that to be uppercase. Well, let's see what we can do here. Let's use the upper function, which again is declarative. So with numbers, dashes, and spaces, upper isn't going to do anything, but when it comes to alpha characters like NOV, it's going to make them uppercase. All right, so now that we have this user-defined function, let's use it in a label here. Bring over a text label. And let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, so here is the name of our function. Now we need to pass into it a date. So we'll say today. Oh, look at that. For the full length video, go to youtube.com and search for Darren Neese. Enjoy.